Welcome to getting started recording with Reaper. In this video, we'll focus on getting familiar with Reaper's layout. We'll look at the main toolbar, the transport bar, track and control panels, and the arrange area. The main toolbar located in the top left of the screen contains basic functions that you can turn on and off in Reaper. A few of the ones you may use more frequently are the metronome and snap. You can turn on and off the metronome by simply clicking on it, or you can get to more detailed settings by right clicking on it. Snap affects how media behaves when you drag it around. When enabled, media will snap to a beat or bar mark, while disabled, you'll be able to move it around more freely. Next is the transport bar. Mine is customized to be located at the top of the screen, but by default, when you open yours, it'll be down here. The transport bar contains basic controls to play back your audio, begin recording, and enable repeat. Moving to the right, you can see the current measure that your cursor is at, as well as the timestamp. And then as we go further to the right, you can see the tempo of your project, the time signature of your project, and then also you can see the playback rate. You can use this playback rate to speed up or slow down your music. For example, if you wanted to work out a particular solo section at a slower speed. If you slow down the music, one tip I'd recommend is to right click on this and make sure that you have preserve pitch enabled. The third section we'll look at is the track control panel over here on the left hand side of the screen. Each track represents a unique instrument or take that you'll be recording. You can see that I have a lead guitar track here and then two child tracks underneath that represent take one and take two. Starting on the left hand side of a track, you can see that track's number. You also have the ability to select that track for recording. And then you can enable the ability to listen to that track in real time as you're recording it. Underneath the track's name, you can see where you select the input source from your audio interface that you want this track to listen to. And then moving to the right, you can see the volume knob here the ability to add effects such as EQ and compression. And there's some advanced settings such as automation that we may get to in a later video. On the far right hand side of the track, you can see the tracks meter and where you can mute the track or solo the track. The fourth section we'll look at is the mixer control panel located here in the bottom of the screen. You'll notice that it looks very similar to the track control panel that we just looked at, and making changes in one panel will make changes in the other. In addition to having a fader instead of a volume dial, you'll also notice that there's a pan knob at the top. This is how you can place an instrument right to left in the stereo spectrum. And moving down, you'll see that there's a route icon, which is how you can send a track to an effects bus such as reverb or delay. We'll talk about why you may want to do this in a later video. Finally, let's look at the arrange area here in the middle of the screen. The arrange area contains all of the media items that you record. You can see that I have audio here on take one and two, and there are some MIDI tracks up here as well. At the top of the arrange area, you can see the timeline, which contains beats and time. And then above that are regions that I've entered to mark out key sections within my song, such as verses and choruses. Let's review what we've learned. You should now be comfortable with the main components within Reaper's layout, including the main toolbar, the transport bar, the track and mixer control panels, and the arrange area. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to know when more content like this is released, subscribe and ring the bell.